Welcome to Voice Print with Trevor Duvall and guests. And now, your host and mine, Trevor Duvall. All right. And welcome, everybody, to Voice Print with Trevor Duvall. Wow, I love that music track. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's just You've a You've never track. heard of the Millennium Falcon? <laughs> My <laughs> gosh. It, wow, it's, it's, so, it's, it's so totally humid reminiscent. in this little cantina of yours. I'm I, I know. I just I like to reference Star Wars occasionally because <laughs> it's, really it's good. Hi. So this is uh, the very first uh, podcast uh, of Voice Print with Trevor Duvall, and that would be me. Uh, hi, so first Trevor. of all, hi, Sam. Uh, this is Sam Vincent. I love you, Trevor. <laughs> Listen to that. That's so okay. Hot. I can actually. God, I, he's got groupies in here. Oh I'll, my God, Trevor, we you don't want have, you. That's the thing. You don't actually have to do the sound effects. I can put them in. Oh, oh, this is like way more <laughs> higher tech like than what we got where I'm come from. Yeah, eh? you know, like this. usually we don't have that. We have to actually bring people I from know, like different villages. That was like in. in the 30s, you know, when you wanted to ring the bell. You just yeah. ring the bell. Right. Or you, the door. Man come in door. Right. He come in door. That was classic days of radio. You know, you have know. like a whole set of bell people but, doing things. But now, now you just push button. This whole button. It's sad. It's <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, so before sorry. we get off on a bit of a tangent here, I should probably Still explain... Like what the hell the show's about. All right. Uh, this is the first in a uh, limited uh, series, probably six, uh, of interviews with prominent... Make it seven. Make it seven. Seven's a nice number, good luck. Off. You know, you want your feng shui to be good. In, <laughs> interviews with prominent voice actors <clears throat> here in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, we are kind of the seat of uh, of anime in North the America. The seat of anime. The seat of anime. It's kind of like that Gary Zukav uh, book, um, The Seat of the Soul, but it's different. Uh, but, but different. It's yeah, okay. more about cartoons and everything. Yeah. So uh, I decided to uh, put together a podcast with interviews of all the big guns in uh, the industry, including myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's such... Wow. Just looking I'd, at his big gun right now. Oh, Lordy. I'd say family show, but I don't really think that's the case. I don't think the there's anybody listening <laughs> out there. Come on. There's that, there's that one the guy. He's, you know, I work on you know, I work up in the North Pole. You know, I'm in charge of the station up there. And I just tune in different things sometimes. And I came across this one guy, Trevor DeBall. I thought he had a sweet sounding voice, so I'll just start listening. I'll just start listening. Next All thing the I know, time. I'm doing some and rubbing. Then I go out and I get myself a get myself a warm seal <laughs> and I bring it into the <laughs> station. A, I go hunting. He's a seal. Yeah, I'll bring he's a I'll seal. Go, I'll go and get the Inuit and I just get myself a seal and I pretend <laughs> that's Trevor and then I just click on his podcast and I imagine that he's talking sweetly to me and I'm 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 caressing the seal. Here, let me give you some of what he might actually hear in those cold trucker nights in okay. the back of his cab having just come from I'm working North at Pole. a polar station. I ain't a, I ain't a trucker. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. That's no, just I think ignorance. That's... I got a degree. <laughs> I went to MIT. I got me a degree in engineering. <clears throat> what he hears, what he hears. Okay, what's he hear? I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, that's the best seal I can give you, I'm sorry. Well, I, I like suck. it. I kind of like kinda it. kind of gets Shh, going. You, you, need to, you need to be quiet. I'm going to get in trouble. You need <laughs> to be right. quiet, little seal. Longest <laughs> introduction ever. <laughs> you right. Oh, is so. there actually an interview process? <laughs> There's a... So we are trying, or I am trying to provide <laughs> for you, the fans, a audio forum where you can... Uh, uh, download the podcast and and listen to the big guns in the industry, the guys that uh, the, and girls that uh, you have come to ladies know and love. Too. The ladies too, yes. Um, because we do a lot of these conventions, and uh, all the time I get asked the question: So how'd you get into this? And how do you get? I'm really trying to get it. They don't all so sound you, like that. I okay, know they Trav. don't sound like that. That was just most of them do, but anyway, how do you? How do you? How do you? No, <laughs> but I do get asked <laughs> that question all the time, as I'm sure do you, Sam. And I yeah. thought it would be a cool thing to do on the old fan site to provide uh, this kind of thing, a podcast that uh, had. Uh, me and some of the the other uh, uh, voice guys in town just talk about their careers and how they got in and uh, give some advice to people who want to get in and all that kind of stuff. So here we are. This is the uh, first, as I said, first official episode 
of totally uh, voice cool. print. Yeah, it is totally cool. Very exciting here. Very exciting. That's right. So, uh, first of all, a little bit about me for those of you who may not know anything about me. If you just found this by casually perusing the web and landed on my site or something like that. Uh, I am Trevor Val. I am in Vancouver. And I am a voice guy. And I've done all kinds of stuff. Tell us all about the stuff well, that you've done, Trevor. Let's I've just start done. from... Let's, the, let's skip elementary school because okay, we all know well, about you in the in play. In elementary there, I played sort of the dragon that was at the sawhorse but i gave him a th- oh no no no! wait we're talking tv now uh i'm probably most most well known for uh in the anime world anyway as mula flaga in gundam seed that was sort of the big one <laughs> that's not an obvious joke at all i'm very glad yeah that you made that one. yes flaga, yeah all you know you've just crushed the hearts of all these uh, all these fans out there yeah. i'm sorry for crushing your heart <laughs> we're gonna I'm get to you we're, we're gonna get to you on, on gundam seed because you played Ooh. a very lovely i did man. he's a beautiful beautiful a young boy very, very young Yes. Yeah. Kira. That's what you kept saying. Kira. Kira. No, I was the Atherin, yeah, but I kept saying Kira. <laughs> Kira. 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 Uh, so, yeah, I, I was uh, uh, Mula Flaga on, uh, on that show. <laughs> and also, uh, Mordred Payne on uh, Dragon Booster. What a. Oh, sorry, oh, get in a call. Oh, look at this. We're oh, getting a call. See. See, you know what? Um, turn turn off after. all your cell phones during your <laughs> Listen, this, this is my Euro Trust music. Yeah, come on down to the club and listen to me rock. <laughs> Who is it? It's it my sounds, brother. Hold on a second. It sounds beautiful. Gabe. Oh, this is Gabe. Hey, on the how's line. it going? I'm doing a this I'm doing a podcast interview with Trevor Duvall right, right now. now. Live. We're on the internet and we're having an interview. Hey, speak really loudly in the microphone. Maybe they can hear you. There oh, you. say it. Can you hear that? Probably not. <laughs> oh, we heard something. Yeah, hear something? He's, he's That's my brother laugh. Gabe on the phone right now, and he's actually a voice actor. If you Google him or Wikipedia him at K H O U T H, that's his last name, Gabe Coot. You'll find out all his list of voice credits as well. Okay. Look at so this. There you go, brothers. Bonus Sam guest. Vincent, Gabe Coot. You're getting two for the price of one. <laughs> two for the price <laughs> of one. You buy it. You he's buy wonderful. It. Yeah, I'm gonna have a drink. Okay, so Trevor, Trev, why don't you talk to? Why don't you yeah. just tell them more about yourself? And I'll just talk to my brother real quick here. Okay. <laughs> okay, what's up? Uh, yeah. So anyway, um, where the hell was I? A whole whack of stuff. Gundam Seed and uh, Dragon Booster and uh, Alien Racers, Class of the Titans. I was a number of characters, about five yeah, different characters on that. Uh, we just finished uh, the new George of the okay, Jungle. Right. I was Take on care. that. Bye. Uh, a show called Ark, which I did uh, with uh, James Woods. That was a big one. That was a fun one. That's a number of years ago now. Uh, a show called Crypto, which Sam is also part of. Uh, just a whole whack of stuff. And, He's uh, reading off a resume. I really, because he doesn't you know remember what? any of this stuff. I, I really don't. And I That's have right. to bring like a cheat sheet when I go to these conventions because guaranteed <clears throat> fans come up and they go, so what, what did you do? And I'm like, oh, uh, uh, I don't remember and I, I completely blank it's it's no not good. your it's, job to remember it's everybody else's job to remember, exactly to remember that's that. what i keep telling them yeah uh so <laughs> anyway well, you that's need to me. do your homework then don't you i really do you uh, know that's what you said you need to do your homework <laughs> what have you done well if you, you need to go I out am, and find out then you need to do you did you go homework right now because you can go to hell if you don't know who i am very 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 you don't know anyway i'm not going to go on about myself because i have i have all kinds of time to do that but but tonight, yes. tonight, tonight, what is the date today? It's the 14th of June. It, it, well, I, in it, fact, it, I know it's the 14th it, it, of June because it, it's my it, ex-girlfriend's it's birthday. It's Thursday. And I and it is probably the, be remembering It is the 14th of June, birthday, uh, 2007. 2007, and we've yes. made it this far. One day closer to the apocalypse. <laughs> ah. I am sitting here with the madness of Sam Vincent. He has been uh, so kind as to join us here in what I'm calling Against my the will. Studio. Listen, th- listen, you can hear the chains. Listen. These are manacles. <laughs> They're Velcro chains. Oh, that's that's my Velcro. Those, oh, these are Velcro. I can get out of these anytime. You can. I'll, listen, but here, you hear that? That's, that's the th- sound. those aren't car keys. I swear to God, they're not. Those are handcuffs. <laughs> I'm in a dungeon right now, and I've been handcuffed, and it's a very uh, nice dungeon. But it's, it's I can't. Dungeon. I cannot leave until Trev like 
unlocks me. Exactly. And I, and he and has I have... the key to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> literally. 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 So Sam, yeah. I would like to talk to you <laughs> about <laughs> your career. My career. Why don't you start off by telling uh, the kids out there <laughs> out in internet radio land <clears throat> uh, just uh, what <clears throat> stuff you've you've been on recently? What what do you think you're best known for? Well, <clears throat> this is Trying to get a get a gauge on who might, you know, be out there. For the anime fans who are purists, you know, yes. they don't want to hear about the, the prelay stuff. I don't care what kind of prelay you've done. I just want to hear about all the anime. Exactly. Um, well, I st- I'm still riding that whole Gundam thing, you know. Atherin, Atherin Zala. Atherin Zala. Atherin Zala. When will this war end? I hope never. Because when it does, I'll be out of a job. So let's keep the war going. And hating it, but loving it at the same time. And make sure that all of those beauty shops are on the ships, because how else are we going to keep our hair so nice? How are we going to look so pretty in our little fighter Gundam mobiles? Hmm? That's that was right. really the entire premise of that show, wasn't no, it? No, it was it, keep it, the war going I protest, so we can it's much keep... deeper than that. It's got so many sociological... Um, hey, hey, don't mock the parallels. fans. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> I didn't mean that. Of course not. Really, I didn't mean that. No, no, I didn't mean Atherin, that at all. Yeah, Atherin's all I'd probably say is the biggie as far as anime goes, you know. There's there's a gun I'm following now, yeah. you know. You know, your character... You know, he's there too, acting all... You know, all hot, all hot, with bothered. his hair and his <clears throat> robot, you know, machine, his fighter machines. plane thingy. Yeah, and you know, and yeah, but, but I mean, you've I, done far more than just. I no, mean, no, you're, okay, you're, okay, but, but for, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I, as you can see, I have, I have a problem <laughs> staying on track. With uh, okay, uh, um, that's going to be a common problem on yes, the show yes, somehow. Just, I think. Going to go on, dude. I mean, I listened for like five minutes, but those guys just kept going on. Man, I had to just like zone out, dude. Like, you seriously got to get some editing going on or something because that's precisely right you know yeah that's exactly <laughs> what's gonna, gonna cut this this little yeah. thing down it'll be and now minutes. this was sam vincent ah, there he was yeah. he's a very talented guy yeah no okay <laughs> sam so, had to run he was being pursued by you know okay <laughs> so oh back to anime uh hikaru nogo is uh, probably something that uh, some people are watching and uh, I'll just wrap that up last now that year. was the show about the go, game, go, the game, go, the game, go, go, game. I, go I did game. a number uh, of characters on that, and I, I must admit, I, never figured I, out how to play it. Well, I never did figure out how to play it, and wow. I didn't really think how a, a, a show about a, a, a basically chess would be yeah. really action packed. Well, but, it's, but it's it's I love the, the way they made. They had this, the close ups of the fingers going to the boards, and they like, have the lasers <laughs> and the thing, like I'm going in for the master move. <laughs> Boom! I place it down. Bam! It was like oh, he did the divine move, <laughs> and that that's quite you know engaging. Oh, it can be. It can be engaging. It can be. It so can that be. was yeah. And, no, I mean uh, I don't find it engaging, but I can no, see how a lot of people. Do. Some people might. Yeah. So that was fun. So there's that one, and uh, you know I don't know people back in the day. Did you ever do card captors? Uh, a lot of people one, come I up to me. Coming doing card captors. That's a few years ago. Now. Yeah, that's a few yeah, years ago. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's still there it's somewhere in the universe. Anime land. Um, and uh, I don't know, anime. That uh, there's other things. Go look at and you'll Just, find out. Well, uh, oh, oh I, Zoids was a thing that people Zoids. Liked. You were on Zoids. I was on you? Zoids as well. I yeah. played Brad and the Dark Judge and That's Sebastian good. the Robot. Let's just see what else. Yeah, let's, been get, let's get, that piece, according, get that piece of paper out. According to IMDb, which I IMDb. can tell you, <clears throat> I'm very upset with them because. Oh, they, this is something I want to. Okay, you you do your thing, and right. then I'm going to clear up something. Uh, okay, because okay. IMDb. I mean, God bless them. They're really trying, but they often get their facts wrong. Yes, this is what I wanted and to talk to you yes, about. Yes, and for me, the big thing And this is, is concerning because I never did gay porn. Well, <laughs> and yet you're all over that. I don't know what's site. going on. This is crazy, these rumors. <laughs> Your taint is showing on the site. It's not... Uh, I was Pyro in X-Men Evolution, and it's, the site said that I was just Captain Stone, which I played as well, and that my, I think they said that Mike Dobson, a good colleague of ours, who I'm hoping will be on the show, um, 
played Pyro. And mm. and I, I said, oh, that's not right. So I wrote them. And I said, uh, this is Trevor DeVal. And I want Help. you to know that <laughs> I actually... And so they went, oh, of course. You. And so they changed it. But oh. then a week later, it was right back. And I never heard anything. From wow. it. I was like, what is going on with these wow. people? So they sometimes their facts are astounding. <clears throat> they know more about our careers than we do. Yes. But sometimes not as so much. Well, we, the good, I have, the, I have the to good. say, there must have been an actor out there in the mid-80s uh, named Sam Vincent because... <laughs> Who did, say, Falcon Crest? Yeah! <laughs> I'm getting credits for Falcon or Crest. Cagney and Lacey. I was... I was, you know, I was uh, not that old uh, back in the Falcon Crest days. I was no. still in high school, yeah. and I never played a, I believe it was a bartender. Yes, we've a, got bartender oh, here. Oh, you got the correct. Oh, yeah, and you recurred. Uh, I was a recurring, you apparently, recurring on bartender Falcon Crest. in several episodes, hey, uh, several of, Falcon episodes of Falcon Crest as a bartender, in, an underage bartender, that's nonetheless. Clearly, but hey, well, in 1984. So I'm yeah. sure there's some man out there, Sam Vincent, uh, we share the same name, and I hope he's listening right now. And I hope you're listening. And I hope he's. And I hope your career is still actor. flourishing because yeah. you know it's, it's. You know, I hope it's still going well for you. Um, Look at yes. this. And also, it's, also, were, you, were but, you really in the rocket? No, team? that's another. I, 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 I remember I was at a con and. Uh, I was offered some uh, lightsaber pocky sticks from some uh -huh. very nice young uh, man and uh, um, asked if I was um, uh, was in the Rocketeer, and wow. I said. Uh, uh, no, not that I remember. Are you sure? Because I I, I, I brought my uh, Rocketeer DVD for you to sign. I'm like, I don't think you want me to sign that. <laughs> no. You've got the wrong You've Sam got the wrong Vincent. Sam Vincent. Well, yeah, but it says here it was in 1991, and I thought maybe that's true. You played Victor and the film stage, di film stage director. Why? Well, I was a film stage director. Ah. <laughs> well, whatever. You weren't in it. No. Ranma, Ranma one half you were in. Yeah. I, Baywatch, I'm thinking no, probably and this not. No, that's the same dude. You think of Baywatch, <laughs> Falcon Crest. This, this is the same man. There's another man out there, and we're sharing the same resume. And he's probably going, I never did all these voice I, things. <clears throat> exactly. I've never done all these cartoons. This is weird. Jeez, look at all this. You've got Casper's Haunted Christmas on Oh, you know, that was fun. Yeah, I, I played Spooky. Spooky, that's there right. And my girlfriend, Poyle. Yeah. <laughs> very nice. I looked like uh, Casper. They painted my face so I could look like Casper. It was kind of cool. Oh, were you on First Wave? I was on First Wave. Did you do a First Wave? wave? This, is, this is an on-camera thing. This is, yes. There are some very <laughs> accurate, uh, accurate on-camera. What do they music? say here about First Wave? It's, first Wave. Uh, <clears throat> where is it? I can't remember. The, I, I was going to a, a high school reunion, 10-year meeting up with Stanley all, Spencer. Yeah, the name of the and character. I end up getting kidnapped by aliens, and they end up doing some horrible thing to me. See, I had something and horrible happen like, to me in First Wave, too. I played uh, oh. uh, Tim Furlong, I think his name was. Furlong. And he, uh, that was when I was a big fat bastard. The big bastard. gum. I mean, you were, uh, oh, yeah, right. that was my big oh, fat bastard day. That's right. You used to have quite a bit Ooh, extra I was, I was there, a few didn't you? Extra, I like oh, you're a cute, though, aren't well, you? You're well, like you know, a big, happy little kind of Scottish cute, bastard like if that. If by cute, you mean grossly and morbidly obese. Yeah, that's the kind of cute I mean, yeah. Why, is there another type? I don't know. <clears throat> what else? We have all kinds of stuff here. Uh, Viper. Did you do Viper? Viper? Uh, yeah, come on. I mean, that was a few years ago. We've, we've, we've all had our little fair share of the um, UPN episodic yes. that managed. Which did very well. It did, hey, and we all made money off of it. Master so Keaton is another show that I worked on as well. You played uh, a, a, a bounty hunter, apparently, on a, this. This is the thing. What, 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 uh, Master what, what, Keaton. You remember what, the, the show, uh, Master what, Keaton? I think uh, what, what, that was the show about he was this kind of smart guy who would go all around the world. You I know. think I know. I don't remember that <laughs> one, no. I don't remember that. Well, it was a good one, damn it. It was really good. Baby Looney Tunes is a Oh, uh, yeah, that's a... Uh, yeah, Baby Looney Tunes was, uh, I mean, the anime fans and... Well, <clears throat> basically, they were Bugs and Daffy and Tweety right. as little babies. That's now, for the, cool. you know, for the Looney Tune purists and for all those people out there, for this, this, like is, me. Pure, this is pure heresy, you know, they don't <laughs> go, my, but for me, I didn't give a rat's bum because, yeah. you know, this is a great opportunity to, uh, you know, uh, let me just give you a little Please sample. do. <clears throat> all right, Daffy, this was a little bit of Bugs Bunny. All right, Daffy, come over here, Daffy, let's play a little game. You know, good, of course, good. Daffy, laugh it, I don't want to play your super game, Bugs. Oh, you are despicable. Laugh it. I'm calling Granny. You know, so. All right, and yeah, one more. Spit. That's and, all right. Oh, I thought I saw a pretty tat. I did. I did see a pretty tat. Oh, Granny. So, wow, you know, that's so. very good. It's <clears> like <throat> they're 
<clears throat> Bugs Bunny It's characters. like they're but them, but babies. they're babies. Yeah. That's really... <laughs> how did they come up with that? Yeah. Okay. It's kooky. That's very, yeah, it's very cool. Anyway, that was Very fun. cool. X-Men Evolution. Who did you play on that? Uh, I was Forge. <laughs> it was, ooh, Forge is my favorite character. Ooh, I don't even know Forge. Not. Yeah, well, nobody knows. Actually, I had the, the, the Forge action figure from, like, Marvel's doing all the X-Men figures probably was in, like, the mid 90s or whatever and for, he, he was so cool he had a mustache i mean that and a headband <laughs> forge had a mustache and a headband and a little like a, in his in his you know are you looking for something cool in the figure it had like a little leather strap on his leg wow wow he was like disco and see but in in the Just show in, in x-men evolution they made him into he, he was trapped in the 70s and <laughs> It was just, I was just happy to have the work, really. Well, I mean, that's I, what it's all about. And it would have been end. nice to be like one of the that's, cool guys. I'll but. have to ask Stan Lee about you oh, when I see him right. next. You, you know, Stan. just for those of you who don't know, which at this point is all of you, uh, <laughs> I was I met Stan in New York earlier this year in, in March of 2007 or something. Uh, it was great. We had some laughs. We had some laughs. It was beautiful. So then we got me and Kirby Morrow, who uh, sadly will not be on this installment of the show because he's traveling. That's right, because he's right in now. Ireland. In Ireland right now. That's right, all right. But all right, all right, all right. Uh, we, we met Stan in New York, and then we got invited to Vegas for the opening of Spider Man 3. So that was something to see Spider Man 3 with the man. That's right. And Excelsior! Ex and you know what's really cool, actually? This was my favorite part of the whole thing. It had nothing to do with the movie or Spider Man or anything. The guy. Mm. who was hosting the event at the theater was Mr. Robin Leach. And he was Robin there. Leach. He was talking about That's how right. Stan Lee is the most important figure in modern-day comic book animation. He really didn't know what the hell he was talking about. But he just kept they talking. They paid him a whack of cash to And said. there he was. Yeah. And he had this beautiful, like, 22 beautiful like, woman. bombshell blonde Have you pow. seen him? He's Woof. doing the, the surreal life and he's hosting that. Oh, he's hosting the surreal life. He hosts the surreal life. The, yeah, like they have the celebrity competition. It's... Um, it's uh, it's fun to peruse for a minute or you two. You see, Sam, if you if if you work hard, son, if you work hard, one day maybe. you too can be a wash up on a show. Ah, uh, like I think I am a wash up on a show right here, <laughs> right now, Trevor. <laughs> well, I wasn't gonna say it. I wasn't Just gonna say joking. it. All right, what uh, else we got here? Uh, Mary Kate and Ashley in action. Oh, did you see the animated series? <laughs> did no. you? Why not? No. Why not? Soul Taker, of oh, course. Boo. That was my show as well. Soul um, Taker. What else? We, we got all of you. You've yeah, 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 yeah. But really, let's jump yeah, to the top yeah, yeah. here because this is where where I like uh, to this see. This is where I really get a kick out. Uh, crypto the Super Dog. Crypto we'll the start with that's that. That's right. Hey, tell I'm us, Crypto. Tell crypto us about the Crypto the Super Well, Crypto is, is basically Superman's dog. Yes. And, uh, Super. and and he lives with a boy named Kevin. Uh-huh. Uh, Kevin's a really nice kid. Uh-huh. Uh, I love him to death. Uh-huh. You know? Do you lick him? Ah. Uh, I could kill him if I did. You know, I have uh, a very well, powerful leg. Super tongue. I could basically scrape his face off, so I don't do that. Right. Well, we um, So, yeah, and it's fun. We go out, we, we and my pal Streaky, the cat, uh, we go out and streaky we just... played by Mr. Brian Drummond. Mr. Brian voice. Drummond, who's a fabulous, fabulous voice actor. Yes. And, you know, we just go out and save the world from, well, our city from crime, and it's just fun. And once in a while, you're joined by oh, of the course, Dog sorry. Stars. This is, I forgot. I forgot. That's right. The Dog Stars, the team from outer space of dogs. And you know who my favorite dog star oh, is? Who would that be? <laughs> um, hot Dog. Oh. And you know who plays stop. him? Who's Trevor that? Duvall. That's I right. thought it was Mike I'm Dobson. I'm smoking mad right now. <laughs> smoking mad. That's that's not bad. I know. It's yeah. pretty lame. But, Keep you know. your day job. Yeah, all right. Thanks. <laughs> <clears throat> So. IMDb says that it was Mike Dobson who played the... Uh, oh, they don't get anything right, do they now? Okay, so that's Come good. On. That's a big one. Of course, that's Transformers. A big one. We worked in Transformers. That's right. I was Kobe on Cybertron, and yeah. I was sideswiping on... Mo yeah, it was Armada. Armada, that's yeah. right. Armada, that's, that's cool. right. That's right. Uh, Class of the Titans is a Class of the one. Titans. That's a fun hey, show. That, well, yeah, if you're in Canada, you're seeing it. And if you're anywhere else in the world... Well, maybe they got some European distribution. They oh, there's get, no American there's distribution. There's no American distribution. Well, big basically. apologies to our American friends. Yes. Fine, try and find it, though. Class you know what? Titans. You know where you can find episodes where? or some of them is on YouTube. YouTube, uh, yeah. Kelly Sheridan All actually right. sent uh, another fabulous voice actress. Yeah. Uh, sent me a link, and I was oh. looking at some of these shows, these Class so of the Titans So try and shows. find it. Class of the Titans. It's a good show. It's cool. We're all this, you know, our descendants of, uh, you know, famous Greek mythological characters. Yes, heroes and, and, and gods. I'm and... the descendant of uh, Achilles. My name is Archie. 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 
I don't sound like that. I'm no, you're Archie. Not. Yeah, I'm, I'm just Archie, and <laughs> I really like Atlanta. I got a crush on her, yeah. and I got a wonky heel. Of ha, course, ha, 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 yeah, yeah, imagine that. And uh, I, I, I kick butt sometimes. That was good. That yeah, was... and I got purple hair. Well, there you so go. Anybody's you... into purple hair? Well, is Check all anime out. fans? Check all anime out. fans are into yeah, big purple hair. Yeah, baby. I was uh, <clears throat> Apollo on that show. Apollo. He was Apollo. He's Apollo. Around here. That's right. He did all sorts of interesting accents. I loved you on that show. And then who are you? You're, you're what's his name? That from hell, from oh, Hades. Hades. You're Hades. That's right. Hades. That's right. Hades. Hades. And who was your little fluffy doggy? Um. Um. Eros. Cerebus. Cerebus. That's right. Uh, of course. Cerebus. Depending. Uh, yes. They always change the pronunciation. Yeah. Cerebus. Cerebus. You know, we all. You know, I love doing that show. It's like, oh, what's the what's the Greek? What are we gonna go for? Pronounce Cerebus. 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 Check Cerebus. the dictionary. Cerebus. We're going with Cerebus today, folks. <laughs> All right, sounds good. What else? Tom and Jerry, of course. Tom and Jerry. Which is still going strong. That's all I, you know, that's, that's what I do Jerry on the show. Right I there. eat and I laugh. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. Tell me something. Do you record every episode or do you just do a big wall of library? Well, and... what's going on right now is... When we start the show, we, we, you know, according to the storyboards, we have certain things we have to do, like maybe I have to twirl three times and fall on my butt. Yeah. I do it, but then we slowly build up a, a wall of library, so as the show progresses, I have less and less to do, uh -huh. and at this point, I'm actually not even going to the studio to record anymore. They say they're going to do it in post, and I'll look at the screen, and I'll add whatever they need in post. They'll do some looping. We should probably explain at this time <clears throat> what Walla means. Walla! Walla! Walla is something that we all have to do. Uh, it's in the studio. Walla is basically... Uh, We've taken a v uh, an like, oath to do Walla. And we must do Walla! We must Walla. do Walla! Uh, Walla is like the... Uh, okay, well, in this case, it's like all of the different little sounds and stuff that you have to make, so... Let's do you, a little Walla session right now, Let's do okay? a little Walla let's session. Let's do a Walla session. Okay, okay. Trevor, let's... Okay, uh, yeah. Go. I'll do the director. Yeah, guys, we just need, uh, you know, some teens <sighs> hanging out, having a good time oh, at a party. Oh, oh God, yeah. Walla, okay. Fine. okay, guys, this is... Uh, this is uh, uh, 55A, take 75... Um, da, da, da. So, <laughs> oh, this is Teen Walla? Teen Walla. Sorry, this is Teen I didn't party. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. So, we slate that? <laughs> can we slate that? We just reset. Yeah, okay, let's, we go. Uh, this we go. is uh, line 55A, take 75. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, man, I'm having such a good time. <laughs> I know. Hey, can, you can you pass me some of that? Yeah, all right, oh, man. Geez. Cool. Oh, no, okay. it's bursting. Okay. My pimples okay. are okay. bursting. So, obviously, okay. that would be so anyway, a so would disgusting one. Uh, let's say, oh, okay, we need some uh, panicked terror wall of city, uh, you know, monster attacking the city, just, and we're in New York, so could we just have some panicked kind of citizens? Wall okay, so here we is, go. Yeah, this is line 75A, take 36. Ah, oh, no! Look at that monster! Hey, look at that ah, some kind no. of freaky monster here! <laughs> and the great thing about Walla is... <laughs> See how much fun it is? See, we, just we, like that. Yeah. And that wasn't even real. Yeah, the great thing about Wall is that you're always trying to put in something so completely ridiculous and see if you can get away with it. Pretty much. So let's say <laughs> we're going to do... Oh, this is... Okay, this is this is Village... Okay, we're going to do Village People Walla. Not like YMCA, but... You know, some some explorers, they've come to the village and we're all like from, we all have some kind of weird, nondescript accent. And who are these people? And oh, have you come to save us from the curse and all this stuff? So this is this is village wall of people just getting ready. They're reacting to the, these new visitors. Okay, so we need to, uh, okay, this is village people walla. And we're going to try and add something really ridiculous at the end. Okay, village walla, this is line 85B, uh, uh, take 111. Oh, we look at these people. Like, I, they are oh, so magnificent. Uh, I don't feel so well. I think I have to go to the bathroom. Yes, yes, then okay. Us, Kai, oh, okay. Oh, did somebody say Somebody don't bathroom. say that. You can't, don't, you, can't, you can't say defecate or anything. Come on, guys. Let's take this that's seriously, true, okay? That's true. But, you know, the serious. more things you can slip in there, the yeah. better. Or if you're Richard Cotty, you just go. Yeah. You try and throw yeah. a fart in. Yeah, naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Cox, of course, most of you <clears throat> know him as Inu Asha. Inu Asha. Inu Asha. It's not it was Inu, Inu Asha. It's, in, it's it was actually Inu technically Yasha. it is Inu Asha. Inu Asha. Inu Asha. Inu Asha. Inu Asha. Cool. All well, right. Uh, Martin Mystery was a show. Martin was Mystery. As well. Now, there's a show that I have no idea what it's on the States, maybe Nickelodeon. Uh, YTV up here. But I had a lot of fun because it's one of those faux anime shows. You know, it's the shows that kind of steal from anime, a little gimmicks here and there. But I really like the show. 
I enjoyed that it. That was in the same I, vein as the other show that they produced, which was uh, Teen uh, Galaxy. Right? Well, Teen, yeah, Teen, teen the Galaxy is that, but it, they started out with Totally Spy, so that was their first oh, thing. Oh, that's right, that's right. And then they moved on to Martin Mystery, and then they did Teen Galaxy, and then, is it Team or Teen? Te- oh, team, team, team Galaxy. And now we're now. doing Monster Buster Club, which is another uh, marathon show. But the same I, producer. <clears throat> Yeah, Monster same Mystery. producer. But Martin Mystery was fun. I played Martin Mystery and I played Billy the Alien, and it's a good show. It's kind of reminded me of a mix of like Scooby Doo and a throwback to like Johnny Quest and things like that. Because mm-hmm. you know, it's, anyway, it was fun. And the lovely and talented Terrell Rothery. Is, Terrell Rothery uh, and also Kelly Sheridan and played Kelly Sheridan, my uh, who is on my sister by marriage, right. Diane. She was great on that show. Sister and by then, marriage. So there was still a chance. there was a lot of tension totally there, get it man. On. There was a oh. lot of tension there. We had a lot of fighting going on. Ed, Ed, and Eddie is Ed probably Eddie. the biggest. All no, right, one in the uh, well, biggest in the states. Yes. Um, uh, hello, everyone. I'm Double D, and uh, Cartoon Network is where you'll find Ed and Eddie, and it's very nice to be here. Thank you very much. Um, that's funny. That's the very first time I've ever heard that character. Oh, really? Because I've yeah. never seen the show. Right, because you don't see it up in Canada, right. but it's, down but in the states, it's got a pretty good following. I'm actually going to be going to Comic Con. On this summer, this summer, this summer, the Comic Con coming to a that's con right. I think near it, you. That's right. I think it starts July twenty seventh, twenty eighth, twenty ninth, and perhaps the thirtieth. I don't know. It starts <laughs> the twenty seventh, <27th, laughs> the twenty eighth, <laughs> in San Diego. Wow. But we're uh, going down for City of Terror, a uh, uh, Ed and Nettie panel, uh, because we do have an Ed's movie coming up on the network, on the Cartoon Network, and I think we're going to promo that and have a Q and A, uh, and cool. it'd be good to meet some of the American fans because yes. I don't get to meet them very often. Well, if any of you are going to mm-hmm. be in San Diego for Comic-Con, make sure that you uh, go by the uh, the panel where Sam will be speaking, no doubt. Yes. And uh, say that you heard him on this show. That's right. Hey, I saw you on that show, man. I heard you. You were awesome, dude. <laughs> um, you guys were too weird. And I just like to segue. I got on with it. Since we're on the, uh, the San Diego Comic-Con, yep. I am... In a new show that maybe you don't want to talk about because you're feeling a little sensitive about it. No, no, you know what? I'm over that. Okay. Nerdcore, the producer (laughs) uh, who... uh, uh, Did Dragon Booster. Dragon Booster. I was, you know... More Japan. There you go. They've got a new show out that's already on the Cartoon Network. And apparently, the numbers are very nice for the opening show. And it's called Stormhawks. And uh, I play Arrow. I'm the leader of the Stormhawks. And I also play the Dark Ace who hates Arrow. So it's... uh, That's the voice of Dark Ace. <clears throat> kind of. Because you never actually... I, I asked you once and you wouldn't do it. You were Well, it's it's kind of because I when I want to do Arrow, I, wanna, I mean, when I want to do the Dark Ace, I'm down here. And, you know, going back to Arrow and then go down to Dark... Yeah, you know, yeah, they're yeah. switching back and forth. So, like, <clears throat> I like to get myself nice and meaty before right. I do it. So it's hard to switch it up. But, yeah. yes, Well, Arrow, that and you're not very good. Yeah, so that, that's that makes that's it hard. that's it's hard when you're not good, and it's good when you're not hard. Wait, it can't be good when you're not hard. <laughs> that's imp- no, both wait, wait, those a wait a second. Wait a second. Therefore, both you know those what? Impotence are wrong. is okay. Impotence is fine. <laughs> Impotence and and just inferiority altogether is is the way to go. Believe me. Uh, of course, I know. Of course, I'm just joking about oh, the not very stop good thing. It. Sam but, is one of the best guys in town, and that is why he's on this show <laughs> now. Uh, what I would be interested in knowing, as well as some of the fan things, sure, yeah. is how is it that you got involved in the business? Oh, uh, man. Yeah, that's how everybody yeah. starts. No, how I got, in, you know, it's a little bit of, um, it would be, you know, it's a little bit of being at the right place at the right time, <laughs> Trevor. You know what I'm saying? Well, I've heard well, of that's that. That's right. Well, you know, I've always uh, had a propensity for performing, yeah. and um, my brother as well. We, used, you know, we were always kind of ham, hamming it up with our parents, and you know, putting on the. We used to like to do skits, you know, like you know the skits for the parents when they, <laughs> they got the family party, and you go and do a skit for the. So like, <laughs> the so it's like Christmas time. You That's know, right. You put on a skit yeah, about we the baby Jesus. Yeah, we did that. We do no, that. never about That's, that. I but, love those um, skits. Those <clears throat> sketches. We used to do rip-offs of Carol Burnett and stuff like oh. that. Uh, you know, Mr. Tootball and Miss Wiggins and all that <laughs> stuff. We might, you know, put the grapefruits in the sweater and pretend right. you're... Anyway, we got them rolling in the aisles, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, no, and so basically when we got to high school, I got involved in the theater program, starting off improv, theater sports, then getting involved in the Vancouver High School Drama Festival which was fun. We did the one act play it was a little competition that they had within the city. Got involved in that, and I was just fortunate enough to have 
a couple of friends at my high school, Glad- Gladstone High School Secondary, um, who uh, were already with Go an Gladstone. agent. Go Gladstone! Go Gladstone! East Fan Rocks! <laughs> um, who were with the Vancouver Youth Theater, and um, Carol Tarlington was the artistic director at the time of the Vancouver Youth Theater, and also she was the head of her own agency called Tarlington Talent. She took me on, and uh, that's when I started actually going out for stuff. Um, now, you know, what year was that? <clears throat> I would say that was about 80, 87, mm-hmm. 1987, and I, I, I was 15, and I booked my first TV gig, man. I was oh, so man. excited. Who, who I was, was like, it? I was Pizza Guy on the wi- on Wise Guy. <laughs> Stephen, Wise Stephen, guy. Stephen J. Cannell was that doing... That was the show that really made Vancouver. That was Stephen like J. Cannell, man. He yeah. came up to he Vancouver. He set up shop in North Van, and he started bringing uh, these shows up, like Wise Guy. And then 21 Jump Street was really the show. They, they shot 21 Jump Street at our high school for an episode and they you know I signed up to be an extra and I remember like it was a big thing it was like as an you know being just you know this young punk's like what's all this about man the TV and <laughs> you know, doing shooting something at our school well you know and they were they're of course worried that we you know at our school they actually stopped filming at East Van schools because equipment would go missing <laughs> <laughs> they just stop. Like, yeah, hey, maybe we, you know, actually, we go to East Van schools. It's cheaper to film there. They charge less. But no, they stopped because people started stealing equipment. So oh, they boy. only filmed at the West End schools. But basically, I remember I was in, I was in this, I was sitting in the cafeteria and it was the extras holding. I had my, you know, my apple and my little crappy sandwich that they gave the extras. <laughs> and I'm making five bucks an hour. And, uh, Mr. Johnny Depp walks in. Of course. The cafeteria. Back when he up. was nobody. I mean, that's right. He was 23 Some years old. Chump. Young punk. <laughs> and he, you know, came into the came into the uh, into the cafeteria. And even back then, though, he had such a charisma, <laughs> such a charisma. That young man. That you said, who? Who's that? Yeah, that guy looks kind of cool, man. That kid's gonna that be a that star. That kid's gonna be somebody. It's that gonna kid's be gonna be a pirate someday. <laughs> of the seven seas. He can dare to dream. Every day to dream. So anyway. You know, so I started out doing little bits on Wise Guy, Twenty One Jump Street, and blah 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 blah. And then I got my f- and then I got my first audition for a cartoon, and I had no idea that they. You know, I was like, "Wow, a cartoon! You can, you can! Wow!" So I was like, and Doug Parker, who mm-hmm. is still a a uh, an actor in Vancouver, a, a voice actor and a voice director, and among numerous other things that he does. He kind of gave me my first break because I remember before this audition, I went to a workshop with him and Sue Blue. Oh, yes. Who was a very well known, <clears throat> uh, well, started out as a voice uh, performer and then made her way into voice directing. And yeah. Sue, you, you worked with Sue on Dragon Booster. And on my very first job with you, which oh, was that's uh, right. Lost Continent. Lost Continent, which I don't know whatever happened to that show. But anyway, Sue and I worked with Sue on Dino Babies, and she's a great, 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 great gal and a great director. And she did this workshop, and I went to that. And then I had my first audition with Doug Parker, and it was for Dragon Warrior. And it was for Moku, this young punk full of energy. And he was like, oh, I'm going to beat you up. And I auditioned for it. I got the part, and I did it. And it was my first time doing ADR, which additional dialogue record or whatever. whatever they call it. Automatic dialogue replacement. Automatic too. dialogue replacement. There's so many ways to call it. You can call it automatically dicking uh, <laughs> Roger. 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 Whatever. Sorry, uh, Roger. We sorry, did Roger. really mean that. Mean it, sorry, Roger. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Um, so, anyways, I did that, and you know, it takes a bit of a uh, bit of time to get used to the whole ADR thing. But I, yeah. I had a knack for it, and Doug just started calling me in for stuff that he was now, auditioning. Uh, just to to interject yeah. here yeah. for a minute, yeah. ADR means dubbing, basically. So dubbing. when we get like a, a Japanese cartoon, like an anime, that's ADR to us. So we go in and we replace <clears> the <throat> Japanese voices with English voices, so that uh, yes. you lazy you're in a booth don't have all to by yourself. The, the subtitles. Yes, that's right. But you know, some of you hardcores. I watch it in Japanese. What do they call that? The I don't know. O- otaku? Whatever. Oh, no, no, I think Otaku is just the... Uh, taco? Is, <laughs> not Otaku. Dude, you're talk. confusing me, man. I don't get God. it. Oh. Anyway, um, whatever, anyway so I did that, and I slowly but surely... And then my first prelay was a show called Bucky O'Hare, right. and uh, we only did 13 episodes. Which I don't see on see, IMDb. I'll tell you why you don't see that. It's because I was still going by my last name, K-H-O-U-T-H, Coot, Sam Coot, which is Coot. My, well, my brother says Cooth, but it's Cooth, really. But anyway. <laughs> what the hell does he know, anyway? Vincent's my middle name. Anyway, so, and I, during that time, Bucky O'Hara was credited with that name, so that's why you don't find it. Right. Uh, and also, it's an old show, so they might not even, 
<laughs> when did you to. change your name? <clears throat> oh. Oh, my. I don't know, 12 years ago, 13 years ago. Just oh, yeah. decided to use my middle name. Because you got too good for coot? No, nah, I just wanted Vincent to sound a little more, you know, easy to say. It's a nice name. Distinguished Sam me. Really rolls off the tongue. Hey, I like you that. were saying that's right. Yeah, Sam Vincent. Like that's Sam Vincent kid. That guy. Yeah, that guy. With the voice. Yeah, that kid with the voice. The Sammy, Sammy the voice. Kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so anyway, Bucky O'Hare was my first prelay. I was AFC. I was AFC Blinky, sir. Very AFC nice. Blinky reporting, sir. Very nice. You do a lot of the. Hi. That's that. You know, that's where I started. <laughs> shush, shush. Coming out right here that's on the right. internet. I uh, usually yes. I've. It's been noted that I that usually tend. I started way. out doing the higher pitches. You know, if there was an alpha robot, that's right. where I was going. That's right. what I was gonna do, and uh, that's how I made my bread and butter. And I, you know. So slowly but surely spread the palate. Yes. You know, and you to said to <clears> me, I mean, when I first met you, that uh, back in those days... Which God, you're I, a fat <laughs> bastard! Lose some weight! Well, no, be, just besides that. <laughs> besides saying that. No. Which I'm not anymore. No, he's Failed. very svelte. Screw you. right here before me, very svelte. I can barely see him. That's Why, right. he's turned sideways. He's quite wiry you, now. You did say to me that uh, in your time, when you were sort of coming... Uh, into the voice world that a lot mm. of the characters were big manly men and it was all yeah. like he man and and he guy and, yes and he he man and mm, tough guy tough and guy. beat you upside the head yeah, man exactly but and, now the trend yeah. has really shifted over the well, past say, five years where the the main yeah, characters five, they're all kind of like young teenagers. well that's guys, the thing which that's the i thing. hate yeah well but, see this you know. is the thing is that all the and the guys everybody in this town is really really talented and yeah. The thing is, is that it just, you know, a lot of it depends on where your range is, you know, and and there's a lot of guys with the bigger voices that are battling it out for a smaller number of parts, yeah. you know, and <clears throat> for some reason, the, the market just turns to the youth, uh, you know, it's just yeah. it's such a youth market, and every, everything's teenagers now. Yeah, Before, they wanted big, manly men, yeah. and they, hey, G.I. Joe, yeah. rock and hurrah, yeah. and I was always like, I'd be like that little ferret, you know, trying to find that little high voice somewhere in because they always had one guy was yeah. each, he was either um uh, the technical support the geeky guy and I was I uh, got really good at mastering that kind of geeky thing so I would always try and get that part right. and I'd be in the room and all the guys would be like pong, pong, and I'd be like yeah. oh god don't hurt me don't hurt me <laughs> you know and they'd be like bang bang and now and now it's all hey you know what you got to be a young teenager you got to sound young and Oh, you know, yeah. or even high, and he's like, "Yeah, I hate that." <laughs> oh, yeah. Goddamn teenagers! Yeah, and who knows? But you never know. The market might go the other way, and they want big men. Well, I don't think macho. that's going to happen. No, because I think that the reason why all the shows are about teens is because demographically speaking, in this day and age, teens have all the money. Cause yeah, yeah, they're the ones. They are the yeah. big consumers. But I don't want to get into big uh, tirade or, or no. And I just hope that I here. sound young for the next twenty <laughs> years. Oh, God, <laughs> So, uh, that's pretty cool. That is yeah. pretty cool. So anyway, so, yeah. I don't know what the hell we are no, now. No, you never actually... <laughs> it's okay, I'm totally organized. Oh, fuck. Uh, you never actually set out to be a voice actor. I think that's a common misconception <clears throat> a lot of people have. Is yeah, that, uh, I know. So yeah. when did you know that you want to be a voice actor? But none of us... Well, no. I mean, certainly me, and I don't think you ever said... Mom, I'm going to Vancouver to become a voice actor. You know, it, that's it right. Uh, no, I think that I. Th we I were all just gun runners and drug mm -hmm. dealers, and then yeah. we. Uh, <laughs> that's right. I used to be naturally. a smuggler. Well, it's you know, a smuggler. You right. heard of the Millennium Falcon? That's right. See, I never thought I'd be smuggling one. myself in this. Anyway, <laughs> let's, let's not geek. Let's not geek off right now. Let's okay, let's not geek, geek off right now. For the little picture um, of the podcast. Yeah, I have to put the Millennium Falcon now just because. Um, but no, I think there is a certain type of person in the world who are naturally voice people like they've just born always making sounds always experimenting with their you know the throats going Row. you know they're always sitting they're they're <laughs> perfectly content to sit in a room and go <laughs> you know they're just doing Much things as all we've the time. done for the past 45 right exactly <laughs> we just love just making noise and making sounds and seeing what sounds we can make with our voices what kind of and 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 even if there's people out there who aren't voice actors they're doing it, and 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 they think, man, I I love this what I'm doing, but I I don't see how I could ever use it for anything. But we just were lucky enough that actually we managed to carve a career out for ourselves, and it's it's a combination of luck, but also a combination of once you start to go down that path, you say, hey, this is something that could be lucrative. This is something, you know, uh, that could, you know, you don't really plan on turning it into a career, but once it starts to 
go that way, you think, well, let's get on it, and you start really working on your craft and start to really work on all your voices, and and uh, yeah, and just kind of snowballed. <clears throat> so if you had, sorry, I'm just chewing on that last hook. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you had, sorry, if you, yeah, me, Sam Van- me. Had one piece of advice. One for our piece listeners. Of advice for, for people out there. For all the it young would be actors. to turn the podcast into a musical. That's right. I would tell you to give up your dreams. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about it. Keep on digging those holes and. No, um. <laughs> because you do get asked that all the time. Because I, I know I do with the yeah. conventions, and you <clears throat> must get the same questions all the time. Right. You know, how do I get into it I'm a, I've been you know doing uh, whatever gosh you know the thing is is and this is you, you want to be as realistic as possible because you do not want to crush the hopes and dreams of people who want to be voice actors you know like I said I've been doing this almost uh, well I won't go 18 years let's mm-hmm. say I'm not I'm quite 20 but almost 20 and you know it's taken that long to get to where I am today. You know, and a young guy which is sitting in my closet doing yeah this podcast for free. <laughs> I can't believe it. Chained, chained. Remember, I'm handcuffed, handcuffed. I'm here doing a podcast for free, and I'm handcuffed. See, it's kids, taken... you too can be as successful as after Mr. twenty years of dedication. You too. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. But you know, the thing is, is that you have to be in a. Well, actually, you know what? Now with the internet. You can pretty much do things on the internet and, and and get your stuff out there and have people listen to it and get feedback if you're technically inclined. But if you actually want to make a living doing animation, you have to be where animation is done. And, you know. So Vancouver, Vancouver Toronto, Toronto, Los, Toronto Angeles, Los Angeles, New, New York, York to a certain degree. Houston. Most, yeah. I kind mean, of. The, you know. The, <clears throat> But I mean, where there's doing a lot of animation, where there's plenty and plenty of like prelay series, Vancouver is, um, you know, one of the bigger cities in North America for animation because, the you know, we are we have set rates that are very uh, attractive for um, you know American producers to come up here and, and get their shows done. We really <clears throat> do a tremendous amount of work here. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I had heard once that Vancouver was considered like <clears throat> one of the top places, if not the top place in the world for mm-hmm. getting like English speaking animation done. Yeah. And I could totally see that because of the amount of work that goes on here. And the fact is the talent pool is pretty awesome here. You I know? mean, like, it's smaller. Really... Definitely it's smaller compared to LA, of course, because LA yeah. has just got so many numbers. Yeah. And the good thing too about being in Vancouver is the fact is that the the majority of work that's coming here is geared towards uh, animation that's not the highest and in the set in the sense that it's not about the big feature films and they're not looking for most of the time they're not looking for names. In LA it seems to be that that you know that's that's a, right. that's the thing like is, with all of the new <clears throat> films coming out and the big you know, you know the big features they want they need they need star vehicles you know to push these right. this product they're not looking for that in Vancouver they're just looking for good solid voice actors who can create good characters uh, and that somebody <clears throat> described us as like the workhorse of Saturday morning the, work- the workhorses of Saturday I guess morning. So. I guess so. Because there's so many roles that need to be filled in those mm-hmm. cartoons. And and, they, and, and they, gosh darn it, it, see, it falls to us. And we do it. And what a job it is. I yeah. Must say. But okay, but see, this is the thing. I'm getting off like what advice I can give to people. Yes. So th- this is the thing is that I know people in Vancouver who are good actors, who are maybe doing mostly television or whatever, who have heard about the voice market. They say, oh, I'd love to get into that. And these are people who are experienced professional actors who may have you know, some pretty good acting chops and some voice uh, abilities, and they're trying to get in to the voice industry because it is a quite a tight circle. I mean, the, the group of people that do most of the work, they do it over and over and over again. And every so often, there's new people brought into the fold but it doesn't happen. It's it, it doesn't happen that often that a new person comes in and is and, and is in there on a regular basis. So, you know, to to get into the voice work, you would have to come to Vancouver. You would have to, you know, have a demo tape already in place of your your vocal abilities. You would have to most likely find an agent to 
uh, promote you once you, once they're in, if you interest them, you lip, they listen to your CD and they go, wow, you've got potential. Yeah, I'll take you on as a client. Then you start the process of getting heard by the local casting directors and hopefully you get an audition for some of these shows that are coming in. And if they like you, maybe, you know, you, maybe if you're lucky, you'll get, you know, or that good, you'll get a part right away. And if not, they'll say, yeah, I'm going to remember you and bring you in. And then you just have to slowly make your way into the business. So it's. I think the thing that a lot of people uh, forget to, or or may not even be aware of, is that there's this misconception, certainly in Vancouver anyway, that uh, the voice community is closed and it's a very tight little group. And while it is a tight knit community, I could say, you know, being proud to be part of it, it it is very much open. I hear from casting directors all the time that they're always looking for the next voice. They're yeah. always looking for who who's good, who can we bring into this. Group, so uh, you know, I think that if you do have what you think yes. of the chops, you know, the work will find you. If, as you say, you're I, in the right I, place. I'm if a big in... believer in that. In well, not just in acting, but in any craft, is that of course you have to be in the right place for people to see your work and hear it, so you can get the work. But anybody who is truly dedicated to working on their craft, to working on their talents, it's one thing to have talent, but you have to. Take that talent, and you have to, to you have to work on it, and work on it, and work on it, and get to a place where it's actually a really high quality product that you've made. I believe that you know anybody can make it; that the work will find itself if you're determined, right? But I think a hard thing to do, <clears throat> and you can see this uh, on shows like American Idol, and you know the beginning audition process where people come in and audition, and, and they really think they can sing. And we all have a good chuckle and we all have a good laugh and we go, oh, how can these people really think that they're good singers, you know? And how do you get to be that honest with yourself to really know where you're at, to know whether or not you've got what it takes if you've got something? And I think that that's a thing that uh, people have a hard time uh, being able to judge is like you have to be realistic. Do you really, 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 really <laughs> think that you have uh, what it takes to be a voice actor or, or a singer or whatever. You really have to be honest with yourself, you know, and sit down and go, you know what? Uh, my mom thinks I'm pretty good. My little brother thinks I'm pretty good. But everybody else doesn't. Then you probably... That might be a sign. That might be a sign that, you know what? It's just not in the cards for you. Now, that doesn't mean you, 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 you should give up, but the thing is you have to be honest where you're at. And yeah. sometimes some people already have natural ability and talent, and, and they're, they've kind of got a head start. And if you don't think you're there, you're going to have to work twice as hard. That's just L the way Let it me is. ask you this. Do you think <clears throat> that uh, what we do, do you think that that is some sort of uh, innate born ability, or do you think it could be taught? Uh, mm, I think – you definitely can't teach voice acting. I mean, you can you can help hone a, an ability, a talent that's there. But I I think that if you have a talent for making voices, it's something that you born. It's like it's like you know, it's like singing. It's like you you're born with a decent voice. You know what I mean? For some some people just aren't born with a decent voice. And you know, and, what are you talking about? And, you know My what I mean? Like is a, a singing thing. voice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. You know it, and and it, if it, and even if someone's born with a naturally good singing voice, that doesn't mean that they, you know, oh, I've got a decent singing voice. That's it. No, okay. So now you've got the raw talent. Now you've got to start honing it. Now you've got to start working on it. Now you got to work over and over and over and over and over and over and over again until you can actually call yourself a professional, you know, a master craftsman. And that takes years of practice and dedication for anybody to call themselves a master of their craft. So starting with the little <clears throat> kernel with the little seed. That's that's where it starts, but then it's up to yeah. you to hone it if yeah. you have it. And chances are, if your mother and brother are the only people telling you that you have it, it's time to try a different yeah. line. Of and, work. If, and if you know, if you're in love with animation and you just cannot, you know, I just cannot get get away from it, you know, then then rework your rework your paradigm. Say, you know what? I've realized I don't have what it takes to do the voice work, but gosh, I really really love voice work and well how about how are you a decent engineer are you a decent audio engineer do you have a good ear for right. you know why not 
take a career in audio engineering. Why not go on the route of recording? I think that's a really good point, too, that that there's all kinds of avenues that uh, people don't think about exploring. Yeah. They get hooked up in one thing. Yeah. The fact is, I mean, if you look at the the community of talented people that that work on any cartoon, the tiniest fraction of them are going to be the voice actors. But you've got, obviously, the producers, but you've got the animators, you've got the the showrunners. I mean, you've got so many. There's so many areas in which, you know, if you can't be a voice actor, maybe the next best thing is to be in a studio recording them. Right. You know, if you enjoy it that much. You <laughs> Recording know. them and, and, and crying. Oh, well, my God, I don't like to do this. I love it. <laughs> I'm just an <laughs> Why do I torture myself every day? Which is I want to be on the other side of the glass. What we're advocating is kids... Torture yourself. That's right. If you can't reach your dreams, that's right. End them. No, of course <laughs> no. not. That's not. I want to play something for you here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take me a second to set it up. Oh, this isn't that clip from 1977. Oh, oh this no, is, it's not this show. Oh, oh, it was. It was. Listen, it was Community. It was Community this Theater. Please don't. This is your life, oh, Sam no. Vincent. Okay. Just hold on a sec. I'm gonna play a clip here, and you tell me what you think of it. Hold on. If you go for my gun, I'll have no choice but to kill you. So don't even think about it. <laughs> nice music. You survive Heliopolis just for that. Don't oh, push God. your luck. You know we we never dreamed that would happen to Heliopolis. It wasn't supposed to go <laughs> down that way at all. Huh? Our only mission was to take the Earth Force's mobile suits that Morgan Reed developed. Nothing else was supposed to happen. Supposed. To. It's also a fact that Orb declared itself neutral and then built those things at Heliopolis. Oh, fair. Th- Listen, We're that's only excellent diction. To protect the plants, our homes. So we can't just look away when they're building those machines. It's the same thing for us. Hey, was that Kigali? Yes. Listen, man. You know, <clears throat> people. I know. Look, I know. There's a lot of you anime women out there who. uh get off on the whole Yahweh thing and you think hey you know it's cool that Akira or Akira and uh, Atherin you know maybe maybe they love each other and all that it's not as much fun for me because <laughs> <coughs> sorry I, Yahweh thing you've never you don't know what like the Yahweh a, thing a Jewish God thing no not <laughs> no, well maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong it's yeah, Yahweh. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not yeah I know what you're thinking no it's I think it pretty sure it's Yahweh you know huh. man, that's, it's not Yahweh it's Yahweh. <laughs> oh, I know, you know what, what you're mean? talking about. Yeah, it's the, the whole, whole thing where they take they take the right. characters, they take them, you know, the, the supposed <laughs> hetero characters, and there's all this underlying sexual tension, and, and then they go off and do their own little things with the characters, and, and then they have them, like, hugging each other naked and having all this, and they uh-huh. get off on it. That's yeah. fine. I'm yeah. all, you know what? Hey, hey, whatever floats your boat, whatever gets you going. Whatever That's fine. Boat. But, you know, as a strapping young man who... <laughs> You well, know, I, strapping, strapping. I'm past. strapped in right now. He's not. He's not <laughs> gonna let me go. Strapped in, old but, guy. You know, come on. Like I, that show, Gundam Seed. I mean, I don't know how many opportunities Atherin had to to partake in a little, you know, fun with uh, numerous yeah. gorgeous women on yeah. this show, and he always refused. He just couldn't. Like he was so, and and it's like he's so hung up on Kira, thinking, oh no, Kira, Kira. you know, Kira, and all these women like. Catherine, I think you like Medi Kid. I'd like to, like, you know, maybe go to bed with you and stuff. But he's like, no, I'm too, I'm too busy. I'm too, I'm too Kira. concerned about the war and Kira. And my hair and, yeah, and Kira's But I really hair. want you, Atherin. Shut up! I'm thinking about <laughs> Kira. He's like, come on well, already, I, I dude. must admit, I've seen quite a you've few episodes seen, okay, of that so show. Okay, so you've seen. And every episode. Yeah. It's a close-up shot of you. Saying mm, Kira. Well, that's the thing. You have to watch uh, Gundam Seed Destiny, which is the next kind yeah. of thing. He, he, Kagali's there, and and all these other women are there, and they're mm-hmm. all like, you know, they want him, and he just doesn't want to have anything to do with it. Yeah. And it's just like, see, you're not really making your case very well here. No, you know? I'm not. I'm and people. I'm, people are going to ask you about this, and well, it's I, I don't know what to say. I, I'm hey, I'm just I'm just another guy watching the show. Going, you know, as a guy going, dude, what's your problem, man? Totally she hot. totally wants you, totally hot, and She's they want you. Big round eyes. Come on, and dude. Great big breasts. round everything, man. <laughs> go for it. And he's yeah. like, no. And I'm, I have to voice him, so I have to go, no. I, <laughs> I'm gonna go. I don't feel like being here and alone in this room with you, and you're half naked. I, I gotta go. I gotta go check on my mobile Gundam suit. And then I'm going to go sit in my 
cockpit and <laughs> and, and think of Kira. Sit think just Kira. sit there and go, Kira. And I'll, I'll be out in seven Kira. minutes. And everybody's like, where'd Atherin go? And he's like, I don't know. I think he went to his mo- a mobile gun- gunham suit and just like hanging out. Like, he's so moody. <laughs> it's like, forget about it. So, you know, as a person watching, I go, come on, bud, just once. Just once. Just lighten up. <laughs> Why does he always come back from his cockpit smelling like hand cream? Yeah. <laughs> What's that all about? I don't Strange. know. That's, don't really well, can't figure that out. Yeah, well, you know, it's just because there's interior leather seats in there. Oh, he's just, clearly. Uh, he's just, you know. Okay, and on that on that perfectly family friendly note, yes, uh, we will yes. bring this particular premiere episode well, of gosh Voice darn Print it. to an end. Mr. Sam Vincent, Mr. Sam Cooked, yeah, as it is. if you like, if you like. Uh, I want to thank you very much for joining me here. Today well, it was nice to be joining here. It with was you. nice to be and joined. It was nice to be joined. <laughs> Oh, man. And uh, by all means, if you uh, <clears throat> enjoy the show, then uh, tune in next time. Uh, I don't know, probably in a week or something. Hey, and also, are you? Uh, I, I think I'm going to be doing Anime Evolution. Yes, I'm doing that as well. Yes, okay. So in, me and Trevor. Uh, in Burnaby. Yes, it's. I believe I it's think, August um, 17th. Yeah, or the week and 19th before. I think it was the 17th or something like that. Yeah, I think that's right, because the week and, before I'm doing <clears> the one in Edmonton. So. so any fans in Edmonton who want to see me, I'll be there. Uh, any fans uh, in the Lower Mainland who want to come out and see uh, SFU. SFU, yes. And SFU bring Kansas. some donations for the food bank as yes, well. Yes, always I do that. Who else? Yeah. I think Jillian Michaels is doing Jillian that. Jillian and I talked to Michael Coleman. Michael Coleman. Yeah, Jillian right, Michael. Michael, 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 Michael Coleman. Michael Coleman. Michael Coleman. Michael Coleman. i got to have him on this show. Yeah, you got to have you. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, Sam. <laughs> and uh, thank all of you out there in internet land for listening. If you enjoyed the podcast, by all means, uh, come back and download the next episode. And uh, tell your friends, do the reviews, do all that kind of crazy stuff. And we will see See you next time, right here on Voice Print with Trevor Duval. Take care. Voice Print! Voice Print! I did it!